So let's take a look at our first problem. We want to order the following numbers. 7.5, uh, uh, 7, whoops, 7.498, uh, uh, and then it's going to be uh, 7.521, and then 7.6. So it's a very simple thing. Uh, in, 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 in I, uh, the idea of it, to write the smallest number first, bigger, 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 largest number on the right, least to greatest. That's what we want to do. The reason it looks a little bit harder is because these num these decimals that we have are, we have a different number of digits here, one digit after the decimal. We have three digits here, three digits here, one digit here. The very first step to these problems is just like in the last lesson, we want to write all the numbers with a decimal to have the same number of digits after the decimal point. That's the very first thing. The second thing, it's going to be a little easier if we write the numbers stacked on top of each other. So let's go ahead and do that. We have three and three. That's the largest number that we have. So let's write them uh, stacked up. 7.5, we can drop zeros at the end behind a decimal. Now we have three digits. 7.5 is the same as 7.500. 0, 0. Now we write this number, 7.498. Now we write this number, 7.521. Now we write this number 7.6, but we can drop uh, zeros here. And now we have numbers with the same number of digits after the decimal. Now we're not going to add them up or anything, but the reason we're stacking them, you'll understand in just a minute. In order to find the smallest number, we have to compare all the whole numbers first, just like we did in the last lesson. All of the whole numbers are seven. So all of the numbers are tied when it comes to the whole numbers. So now we have to start looking for tiebreakers. So now that we've looked at the whole numbers, we look at the tenths place, only looking at this column. What is the smallest number here? It's a four. Now we have a five and a five and a six, but the smallest number is a four. So 7.498, we can stop immediately. That is the smallest number, 7.498. All right, that's the smallest number. Now we need to look at the, uh, to find the next largest number. Now after the four, we have two numbers that have a five here and they are tied. So really to figure out of these two numbers, which is the smallest and which one's the biggest, we look at the next digit. This one has a zero and this one has a two. The zero is smaller, so it's gonna be a little bit less than this one down here. So the next number is 7.500 because this zero was less than this two. Now, this is the next biggest number, 7.521, okay? And now that we've exhausted this number, this number, and this number, the only number left had a six in this first position, 7.600. That's the largest number. Now, we had to add all these digits in order to, um, you know, make them all comparable. So now we'll kind of go back to what the problem statement was. 7.498 was given in the problem, so we can keep that. 498, and then the 7.500 was really 7.5. That's the next biggest number. 7.521, that was in the problem. And then 7.600 was really written as 7.6. These are the numbers in order of least to greatest. 7.498, 7.5, 7.521, 7 and 7.6. I'm gonna go through it one more time. We look at the whole numbers, they're all tied. So we have to look at a tiebreaker. The smallest of the, of, of the tenths here is this one. So this has to be the smallest number. Now we look at anything bigger than four here and we have a tie in the, in the sense that we have two numbers that look to be the same. So we look for a tiebreaker. This one is the smallest number of the tiebreaker. So it goes next. This is the next biggest one. So it goes next. And then we kind of go back to that first place. We had four, we had two at five and the largest number was a six, so this is the largest number. This is the best way to do it. I know that you're going to be tempted to look at these numbers and try to just figure it out by looking at them, but you can't do that in the beginning. Let me tell you why. It looks like 7.521 is going to be the largest number because it looks like 0.521 is like 521. That looks like the biggest number, but decimals behave a little differently because of the way that they work. So we have to convert that, and it turns out that this is actually the biggest one because 600 is bigger than 521. And that's why we pad the zero so we can more easily read uh, you know, what uh, to do next. Another way you can look at it is once you have all the zeros in place, you can say after the seven, uh, 498 is smaller, 500 comes next, 521 comes next, and 600 comes last. That's another way to look at it. And once you write it down, then you can write the decimals down as well. All right, next. 
we are going to uh, take a look at these numbers. Let's take a look at 12, 12.193, 12.201, 12.191, 12.2. Now all of these have three digits after the decimal except for this one. So what we're going to do first is we're going to stack them up. 12, 0 0.193, 12.201, 12.191, 12.2. What is this? Two. But we can drop a zero or even two zeros to make them all match the number of decimals. So the next thing we do is we say, all right, which uh, uh, we start comparing. We look at the whole numbers. The whole numbers are all the same. So I have to look at tiebreaker, which is just going to be in the tenths place. Now we have Two of them have ones and two of them have two. So what is going to be the tiebreaker of the ones? We look next door, but we also have nine. So we have to look next door. Of these two, the one is the smallest. One, nine, one is the smallest. So 12.191 is the smallest. Then, because the tiebreaker was here, three comes next. 12.193, that comes next. Now that was the tiebreaker of the ones. In the tenths place, we also have the twos. These are tied here, so we have to look for a tiebreaker. But we have zeros, which are also a tiebreaker. We have to look for a tiebreaker here, and we have a zero compared to a one. So this one down here is the smaller of these two numbers, the 12.200. And then finally, the last one is the 201, 12.201. So now what we want to do is go back to writing the same numbers that were given in the problem, 12.191. 12.193, 12.2, we wrote it as 200, but 12.2 was given in the problem, and then 12.201. Let me just double check myself. 12.191, 12.193, 12.2, 12.201. Least to greatest. Another way of looking at it, once you get all the decimals padded, is you can just look at the, since, since the whole numbers are the same, you can just look at the decimals. 191 comes first, 193 comes next, 200 comes next, and then 201 comes last. That's another way of looking at it. Either way works for me, whatever you'd like to do. All right, but notice that if you didn't pad the zeros, it would look like this is probably like the smallest one, uh, and then something like maybe this would be the biggest one, but it would mislead you. This one looks like the smallest one, 12.2, because it looks like that's the smallest number, but really it's 0 0.200. So it turns out to be not the smallest one. All right, let's move along. And this one can get a little tricky, so we're going to be very careful when we do this. What about this problem? 0. Uh, 0 0.028. And we'll compare that to 0. 0.08. And we'll compare that to 0. 0.082. And we'll compare that to 0. 0.008. So what we want to do is we want to Make sure we have the same number of digits. Three digits here, three digits here, three digits here, only two here. So we're going to write them stacked up. 0 0.028. This one is 0 0.08. We drop a zero to make it match as well. This one, 0 0.082. And this one, 0 0.008. So now we compare the whole numbers are all zeros, so we have a tie. Then we look at the tenths place. They're also all zeros, so it's also a tie. Now we look in this column for the smallest number. The smallest number is the zero. That's a tiebreaker with everything else that's here. So this is the smallest number, 0 0.008. Now, other than zero, what's the next biggest number? The two. So this one comes next in the list, 0 0.028. After the two comes the eights. But the eights are tied, so to get a tiebreaker, we have to go here. This one with the zero is smaller than this one with the two. So this one comes next, 0 0.080, and then 0 0.082, 0 0.082. And then our final step is let's convert all of these back to the numbers that were given in the problem. 0 0.008 was given, 0 0.028 was given. This one was actually different. It was given as 0 0.08. We padded the zero, so we'll write it like this, and then 0 0.082. Let me check. 0 0.008, 0 0.028, 0 0.08, 0 0.082. It's very, very hard to look at these numbers and figure out which one's smaller and bigger, 
without doing it this way. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying that it will be a little more difficult and it will lead to errors. So I'd really, really, really like you to do it the way I'm teaching you. All right, let's take a look at problem number four. Let's say that we have 0 0.11 compared to 0 0.11. 108 compared to 0 0.113 compared to 0 0.117. All right, so we have three digits, three digits, three digits, two digits. So we have to start by stacking them up. 0 0.11, we're going to pad a zero, so we have three digits. 0 0.108 is this one. 0 0.113 is this one. 0 0.117 is this one. Now we compare the whole numbers, but the whole numbers are all zero, so everything's tied. Next, we look at the tenths place. It's all one, so again, they're all tied. Next, we look at the hundredths. It's one, zero, one, one. The smallest of these is the one with the zero, so this one is the smallest number, 0 0.108. This is the smallest one because when we're comparing this column, that's a zero. Now, all of the other ones are tied. So in order to figure out what comes next, we compare this, uh, this one, and this one, and this one in the last column. Zero, then three, then seven. This is the smallest one, 0 0.110. This is the next biggest one, 0 0.113. This is the final biggest one, or the largest, 0 0.117. And then we try to convert everything back. 0 0.108, that was given in the problem, 0 0.11, we added the zero, this was given in the problem. 0 0.113, and finally 0 0.117 is the final answer. Smallest to biggest. Let me check. 0 0.108, 0 0.11, 0 0.113, 0 0.117. All right, we've done four problems, we have a couple more. Let's just take a look at the following. Let's say we have 22.5, and we'll compare that to 22.5. Six, seven. And we'll compare that to 23.8, and we'll compare that to 23.703. Uh, 703. We have three digits, one, two, and one. The largest number of digits we have is three, so let's stack them up and let's make them all have three digits. So we have 22.5, and we can drop zero, zero, zero. We're looking for three digits here to match. Next, we have 22 decimal six, seven, and we add a single zero to make it match. Next, we have 23 uh, decimal eight, and we'll pad with a couple of zeros here. Finally, we have 23703. 23703. All right, so now we want to write down uh, the, the smallest number. So we compare the whole numbers. Notice we have two of them with 22s and two of them with 23s. So clearly the 22s are gonna be the smallest numbers. No matter what the decimals are, the 23s are gonna be the larger numbers. So of the 22s, which one is the smallest one? So we look behind the decimal. One has a five, one has a six for the tiebreaker. This is the smallest number, 22.500. 22.500. Next come, this was the tiebreaker, this one is the next largest one, 22.670. Next, we have these are the 23. These are going to be at the end. Which one is smaller? Which one's bigger? Look at a tiebreaker. The 7 is smaller than the 8. It has to be the next smallest, 23.703. And then finally, 23.800. That's the biggest one, 23. Point. Eight zero zero. Final thing we do, we just convert the numbers back to what was given in the problem. This one was actually 22.5. This one was 22.67. This one was 23.703. And this one was 23.8. This is the final answer. Smallest number, bigger, 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 largest number. Let me double check myself, 22.5, 22.67, then 23.703, then 23.8. And that is the final answer. All right, this will be our very last problem in this lesson. We're going to order the following numbers, 3.43, uh, 3.307, 3.308, 
then we'll have 3.44, then we'll have 3.5. All right, so then we need to stack them up. Notice we have three digits after the decimal. That's the biggest we have, so we want to make them all have three digits. So let's write the first number down. 3.43, we have to drop a zero to make it three digits. Next we have this one, 3.307. Next we have this one, 3.307. 3.44, we drop a zero here to make that one have three digits. And then we have 3.5. And we can drop two zeros to make those have three digits also. Okay, next, what we're going to do is try to write these guys down in order of least to greatest. We'll write it off to the side here. We first check the whole numbers, they all say three, so they're all tied. Next, for a tiebreaker, we look in the next column. We have four, three, four, five. Three is the smallest, this has to be the smallest number. So, it's going to be 3.307. Now, for the next one, we have a 4 and a 4. These are tied, so we know they're going to come next, but which one of the two is going to be next? We look at a tiebreaker. 3 compared to 4. 3 is smaller. This is the next smallest number. 3.43. Oh. Now, we just said we were comparing 3 to 4, so this one came next. 3.440. And I'll write the next one down below. And the only thing left, we had the three, then we had these two numbers, we had a tiebreaker and figured that out. The five is the next biggest one. So it's 3.500. Final step is to write them down in terms of what the problem was giving us. 3.307, 3.43. We, we added the zero ourselves, so we're going to take it away since this wasn't in the original problem. So 3.43 was really right here. 3.44, we added to zero ourselves, so we'll take it away, and then 3.5. So let's double check, 3.307, 3.43, 3.44, 3.5. I don't really care who you are, it's very hard to look at these numbers and to know which one's the smallest and which one's the biggest unless you have a lot of experience with decimals. Nobody is born knowing, I mean nobody is, I don't care who they tell you they are. So I'm trying to tell you the ways that I know will never get you into trouble. Look at the digits after the decimal. Make them all have the same amount and then just go step by step, digit by digit, figuring out what's the smallest and what's the biggest and so on and write them in sequence. Then go back through and write the original numbers down compared to what we had there and that way you get the original sequence in the right fashion. Smaller, bigger, bigger, largest. Here we have learned how to order decimals from least to greatest. It's an important skill and it helps us figure out important things like money, for instance. Money has decimals. So if I give you $3.52 and somebody else has $3.05, how are you gonna know which who has more money? I mean, I can say it in words and you might know, but if I write the decimal down, you need to be able to know. That's why one reason why we're learning this. I want you to practice these yourself when you feel like you're getting the right answers. Follow me on to part two. We'll wrap up our practice of ordering decimals. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.